Hey guys, it's Angie Atkinson and today at QueenBeing.com we're going to start talking about how to bring your sexy back after you've been in a toxic relationship. It's so easy to lose yourself in that situation and so many of my clients, readers, viewers, and even me, uh, I've been there too. Uh, you know, you go through this phase when you get out of, or even while you're still in a toxic relationship and you just look at yourself and you realize, I don't even know who the hell I am anymore and you certainly don't feel sexy. So after I polled a bunch of my members, I found out that a lot of people are interested in knowing about this topic and how they can bring their sexy back. So that's what we're talking about today. Let's get started. So like I always do before I started this series, I talk to the people in my span group and I ask them what they thought. Well, wait, I'll just, I'll just let me tell you. Today I was talking to a coaching client and she was like, um, hey, it would be, you know, she basically she's struggling with her um, personal, you know, self-esteem and, and understandably so. We've all done that, I think, when we've gone through stuff with our narcissists. I mean, um, I actually left the house with no makeup on purpose a lot back then. <laughs> and I know that sounds funny to you guys, but um, I really stopped caring about myself when I was going through all of that stuff. And I stopped caring how I, how I looked, how I felt. I really just became completely numb, and I think a lot of us go through that. And so one of the ways that I empowered myself when I was, you know, coming back from it all was to, you know, I worked out, I lost weight, but before I did that, I found, you know, my inner diva or my inner whatever. I'm a very girly girl and it just sometimes is just kind of fun to express that. So my question is, is this something that you all could or that any of you could relate to? I know the men are going to be like, Shh, come on, but there's something to this for the men too. Um, yeah. So they said, yes, they wanted it. And I would read all their comments to you, but you already, it doesn't even matter. They want me to, they asked me to teach it. So here we go. So let me ask you, are you feeling frumpy lately? Bumpy? Lumpy? Maybe just plain slumpy? <laughs> Been there. Uh, look, you can tell me. I promise I won't judge you because like I said, I've been there. So listen, let's start here, okay? I say this with love. You are way too amazing to be sitting around looking like you've been looking lately, okay? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know how you've really been looking. I'm just saying, if you're feeling frumpy and strumpy, it's probably because you're too amazing to sit around looking like that, all right? Despite the fact that the way we look shouldn't affect the way we experience the world, the fact is that it does. Whether we like it or not, it does, okay? So let's talk about that. I know because I've been there, as a lot of you guys know, um, when I was 100 pounds heavier, um, life was harder. Uh, yeah, it was. And the way I was treated at 100 pounds heavier and feeling very insecure about myself, as opposed to the way I'm treated today when I go out into the world and I'm quite a lot more secure in myself, even though I'm older, imagine. Um, it's, it's night and day, you guys. And I know a lot of you guys know what I'm talking about. And if you don't, I'll try to help you learn so that you can experience the good part of it as well. Okay. Look, it's hard to be a sexy, gorgeous woman these days, <laughs> but really, truly, when you're dealing with narcissistic abuse and recovery, and even more so if you have kids in the deal, as women, it's just our nature to put our families before ourselves, and often to our own detriment. And of course, when the narcissist is involved, <laughs> almost always to our own detriment, right? So despite our best efforts, we find ourselves experiencing this odd phenomenon that I like to call Mrs. Scrunchy Sweats. Yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about, don't you? You know, when you're out in public and, well, you know, one day you, you look in the mirror and you notice that your standards have changed, you know? And you're walking around in the world in public and you're wearing sweats and it's scrunchy in your hair. In public! Seriously. Look, I couldn't believe it when I found myself doing that stuff. And worse, you justify it to yourself, right? Most likely thinking, oh, I've got way more important things to do than worry about the way I look or the way I carry myself. And you're right, you do. But, I don't know, maybe you're not just putting yourself together like you used to, or maybe you even think that, well, that's what i got to deal with. I'm just really busy. Life is hard. And I'm not the only person i got to worry about, right? That's true. All of that is true. But look, that doesn't mean you have to accept the frump fest that your life has become, my friend. 
you hear me? So you know that you want to change something because, excuse me, my nose is totally edgy. Somebody must be thinking about me, huh? Anyway, you know that you want to change something because something inside of you, every time you see, you know, a woman out there who looks totally put together, um, you know, or whatever, you, you kind of feel a little twinge of jealousy or every time you see a woman, you know, who looks like having it all makes it, you know, it's so easy or it's a breeze. She freaking looks fabulous while she does all the stuff, you know, and, and it might make you feel like not good about yourself. Um, and especially if you've been with a narcissist who, who acknowledges, oh, look how, allergies, I'm sorry, oh, look how pretty she is or look how sexy she is or how big her boobs are or whatever, you know, it kind of makes you want to hate her, doesn't it? I know I did, but look, you know, I've learned a lot over the years and a lot of times when we think we hate someone, it's because they have something that we wish we had ourselves, okay? And if you're still reading this by now, or listening to me by now, I should say, <laughs> you're one of those people. You want to know how she does it. And you know what? I'm going to tell you. How about that? Because I wanted to know too, so I, you know how I do. I figured it out. <laughs> anyway, close your eyes for a minute. And I want you to think about a time in your life when you felt the sexiest. Probably you remember how men and maybe even women looked at you when you walked into the room or the way your man or your your person would pull you a little closer when someone attractive would notice you at a club, right? You might recall that tiny little bit of satisfaction you get when you notice another woman giving you the evil eye because you look so damn good that she can't stand it. Or maybe because you want to learn what that feels like. Maybe you haven't experienced that and you just want to. All right? It's okay. It makes you human. I wanted it too. So look, if you want to get your sexy back, know this. I don't care how old you are. Don't care how much you weigh. Don't care if you have the money to buy new clothes. And I don't care if you wouldn't know a current style if it bit you in the ass. No shit. It's time for you to take back your sexy, my friend. And I'm going to help you do it. And it does not matter. Again, I don't care how old you are. Don't care how much you weigh. Sexy doesn't start with that. Okay, sexy starts right here. I'm going to tell you all about it, okay? First, you need to remember this. If you're going through a divorce with a narcissist, if you're just in the middle of your recovery, the beginning, the end, recovery does not mean the end of passion. It does not mean the end of you, okay? It can, however, mean that you get to choose who and what you become from here on out, okay? And maybe, I don't know, maybe you just want to become the most spicy, sexy, and super fly version of yourself, you think? And despite what your narcissist might tell you, you can do it. You probably already are on your way, and if you're not, I'm going to help you, okay? But the fact is, it's never too late. It's not, all right? So this week, right here on my YouTube channel, I'm going to teach you a few things I've learned over the years, including the following. I'm going to teach you how to stop feeling like you're invisible and start becoming irresistible. Yeah, I am. I'm going to teach you how to heat up your life and rekindle the, your passion or maybe create it for the first time. Whatever it is, I'll help you find it. I'm going to help you bring your sexy back or find it for the first time if you're new with this whole sexy thing. That's all right. I'm going to help you figure out what it is that you want to be. And I want to ask you a question. Would you love to be the sexiest, smartest, most stylish version of yourself? I know you would. And look, I'm not perfect, but I feel pretty good about the self that I've become lately. And, you know, I know that I have my flaws. We all do. But I accept my flaws and I love myself unconditionally. And that's something that I hope to teach you as well. Are you ready? Let's get going on it then, shall we? We're going to go ahead and start today. So, I want to ask you a question. Would you like to know the most closely guarded secrets of the hottest women in the world? Do you want to know the simple to apply principles they use in their day to day lives that separate you from becoming that se sexy, stylish, smart version of yourself that you want to be? Well, we're going to start today with how to find your inner hottie, okay? So let's start with this. Let's define sexy, shall we? Um, I want to start by saying, I'm going to get share with a, a quote with you from Nicole Scherzinger. Okay, she says, girl power is about loving yourself and having confidence in and strength from within. So even if you're not wearing a sexy outfit, 
you feel sexy. Know this, you have the power to be anything and anyone you choose, okay? Your only limit really is your mind and besides, by the way, your mind is also so much more powerful than you realize when it comes to creating this kind of personal change, okay? That is especially true when it comes to appearance and body issues, believe it or not, because the power of intention and intentional vibe management, that is keeping your mind and energy in a positive space, and that's actually a tool that's often ignored when we're working on personal change, and that's why I think a lot of people don't succeed in personal change, okay? So regardless of the reason for it, if you're not satisfied with your life at all, whether it's because of a narcissist or because of your own stuff, it might mean that a change in your mindset is in order, all right? So let's start right here, the sexy mindset, okay? So do you ever feel like you're not good enough? Do you ever feel like everyone else is just like somehow hotter, sexier, more attractive, whatever, than you? Well, it's pretty common when you've been abused by a narcissist in a toxic relationship, and it's the kind of calling card that a lot of narcissists, almost every narcissist, leaves behind, whether they're your mother, your brother, your husband, your wife, it doesn't matter. They almost always leave you feeling like you're ugly and unattractive and everything else and stupid and, God knows, lazy, you know, all the horrible things they tell you about yourself. Well... Look, I'm here to tell you that shows all in your head. Pardon my language. The fact is that, you know, you have the right to be happy. You have the right to to actually define yourself. But the thing is, truly, is really your personal vibe, your perspective and overall attitude that round out your sexy mindset, okay? So there's no single definition of hot. There's no single definition of sexy, and the word sexy doesn't mean the same thing to every person. Yay for everybody, right? Because if it did, like 99% of us would be screwed and not in the right way. Okay. But I think regardless of individual preferences, most normal healthy adults find that it's incredibly sexy when someone they meet, when they meet someone who knows, you know, what what they want from their life and, and isn't afraid to go after it, right? So passion makes us more powerful. Okay, so positive power is always sexy regardless of the context for most people. Healthy people, anyway, not narcissists so much. Yeah, so it really is so easy to blame other people for us not having what we want in our lives. So it doesn't make us bad people, it makes us human. I mean, seriously, why is it that sometimes everybody seems to get what they want but me? Well, that's a bad mindset, you guys. So, look, sexy girl. (laughs) You're missing a big important part of the whole package here, and I'm about to blow your mind when I tell you why it matters so very much. I'm going to put this in the simplest terms possible, okay? If you want to be sexy, you got to believe that you're sexy you gotta act like you're sexy and you have to be actually sexy it all happens from within though is the thing a lot of people think oh I gotta go wear all these clothes and do all these things but you have to start with all all of this right here the clothes and the things are just props or you know like set design or whatever you want to call it okay so it it really does happen from within and and I have known women who were literally you know t-shirt jeans ponytail and and incredibly sexy and then I've seen people who were dressed to the nines head to toe and makeup full face everything and not sexy at all it just really is all about your your mindset the rest is just gravy okay so if you want to be sexy the first thing you can do is is start to be confident in yourself and and believe and feel sexy and then you're already halfway there no shit Sure, your personal style, the makeup you wear, those things can make a difference and they will in the way that you feel about yourself and even in the way people perceive you and we'll get to that this week as well. But in reality, it's really all about the way you carry yourself, your perception of the world and the way that you relate to the people and the situations in, you know, that you're involved with. Okay, so if you're looking at it from that perspective, then all of this brings together the mindset of being sexy and the mindset is where it all begins so look you could look like Megan Fox or Angelina Jolie or you know whatever one is in your generation (laughs) but if you feel ugly you're gonna be ugly and I promise you that's how it works okay stick with me and I'll show you what I mean okay 
So let's talk about what isn't sexy real quick, shall we? Listen up and listen good, okay? First of all, being sexy, as we have discussed before, does not mean that you look a certain way or wear certain clothing, okay? There is no single look that every single person alive is going to find sexy. It's just a fact. Everybody's different. Everybody can be sexy, okay? Physical attractiveness can enhance your level of sexy for sure, but it cannot be your only form of sexy. So if you're super hot and you have nothing on the inside, forget about it. You're not hot. You might be sexy from over here, but once somebody starts hearing what comes out of your mouth, there's, you know, plenty of people, plenty of men out there, I'm sure, who would love to have a, an empty-headed, you know, mannequin, um, and most of those are narcissists, but, <laughs> but that won't even last long, because it is what it is. Narcissists can't be in real relationships, even with empty-headed mannequins, not that there are any of those in the human race. That's, that's another day. Okay, moving right along. <laughs> so, you can be hot, but your, your physical attractiveness is only a tiny sliver of a percentage of how sexy you are. Okay, so look, I know you're like, well, how the hell do you know what's sexy? You're female and we're women and because obviously today's video is for women only. I'm sorry guys, I still love you, but this is just kind of something I'm doing for <laughs> the 76% of female viewers that I have. So what I did was I asked more than 100 guys. I did, I did a survey. I asked 100 guys, what do you find sexy? And, and you guys, you might be surprised when you find out <laughs> that while their answers about physical attractiveness were as different as night and day and waffles, um, <laughs> there were a couple of common themes among them. So let me just go over those with you really quick. Mostly if you want to be attractive to a man, um, you've got to know exactly what you want out of life and you've got to be prepared to go after it. Sure, that's a healthy guy because a narcissist would say that, but he would actually mean have drive and motivation and let me destroy it and then control you and mold you and turn you into my little person that does everything I want, which never works out well for anyone. But you got to know exactly what you want out of life and be prepared, be prepared to go after it. And you'll have a true passion for both any, you know, the person that you end up with and also your dreams for your future success in life. Again, these are from the hundred men that I surveyed. Okay. Um, so let's let's go into the and I'm gonna give you some more details on the survey later this week but for right now let's go into the you know sexy girl attitude mindset confidence etc okay so how would you develop your attitude increase your confidence and you know get that mindset well you know me I'm, I always got something don't I we're gonna start with these five tips number one say thank you a lot early often yeah, always be grateful for what you do have in your life. I say this every single day. I tell all of my clients this, and it's the darn truth. Stop concentrating on what you don't have. Stop focusing on what you don't want. Negative energy, negative thinking uses up a ton of energy, and so why not put your energy into positive thinking instead? That's really sexy, y'all. So you need to, you know, start by listing 10 things you're grateful for. I have a family. I have my health. I have my house. I have my place to put my head at night. I have food in my belly. You know, those five right there off the top of your head. Okay, have friends, have, you know, legs that work, arms that work, eyes that work, a mouth that works. Oh, look, I just hit 10. That's so easy. You see what I'm saying? And then as you go, you can find more and more little details that are amazing about your life and it just gets better and better. It's amazing. So gratitude, you know, when you're stuck, in, uh, you know, if you're stuck in traffic on the way from work, don't sit there and think, oh my God, this traffic's taking forever. Like turn up the music and sing and be like, yay, I have time to sing. Or, or you know, make the phone call with hands free if you're allowed to in your state that you've been meaning to make. Or, you know, um, think or meditate with your eyes open. <laughs> you know, use the time productively if you can. Or just use it to think about happy thoughts. Gratitude, very important. Intentional mindset awareness. Okay? Um, so... Number two, find like-minded people. So you can improve your outlook, uh, you know, by surrounding yourself with positive thinking people. It's just as simple as that. Find people who have the same goals as you, um, you know, and spend some time with them. Their positive energy can rub off on you, believe it or not, <laughs> and you'll start acting and thinking in a more positive way. So look for positive thinking people and spend time with them. People that are doing things that you also want to do. People who are you know, interested in the same things you're interested in, you know, take a class, join a group, 
get involved, right? Like-minded people. Yes, indeed. Think, this is number three. Think sexy thoughts. Sexy positive thoughts. <laughs> Changing your mindset from thumb, from be to fabulous by thinking intentionally sexy and positive thoughts each day. So it can help you to use the mindset quotes, you know, find sexy quotes that you like, or I'll share some with you on queen, at queenbeing.com. Um, you can start using, you know, mindset quotes. You can use um, affirmations on a daily basis. Thinking in a positive manner can actually help relieve your stress and any signs of depression. So stop thinking about things that could go wrong. Don't say life isn't fair. Don't say everything's not going my way. Instead, focusing on focus on how they can turn out better than you expected okay so let's move on number four go deep with your breath okay so fresh air is really gonna help clear your head take a deep breath take a deep breath in deep breath out you know do that ten times it's so easy to spend too much time at your computer in front of the TV I do it too but you know what if you make time to get outside and take advantage of the natural sunlight Dude, it can do wonders for your body and your mind. Sit on the on the porch for an hour, have coffee with someone. Even better, get out and move your ass. Seriously, go take a walk. There's no better com combination than fresh air and fun or fresh air and movement. Even just like I said before, pop your headphones on and walk around the block. It feels great. And, you know, most of the guys that I surveyed actually did say that they found an active woman sexier than a sedentary one not that I'm saying you need to worry about guys but if that's something that you're thinking about about being sexy then movement is sexy own that shit girl <laughs> sorry don't be jealous of anyone this is number five don't be jealous of anyone instead notice and compliment everyone you meet okay on their best quality even if you have to compliment something like their shoes any compliment will do when you are always looking for the best in people your energy becomes much more inviting and making sure that you compliment both men and women remember being a mean girl is very unattractive to most guys according to the hundred that I surveyed by the law of attraction the more compliments and love that you can genuinely put out there the more you'll get back and what could be wrong with that right just saying that's why we do our Friday selfie thing over in the span group because it helps us to feel good about ourselves as well as to give compliments to our fellow spanners it's good stuff all right so those are five big things that you need to know to go from frump to fab this includes of course re-energizing your sexy girl mindset the happier you can be the hotter you're gonna find yourself looking and feeling right so let's do this before we end today I want to tell you a little story um, a few years ago a lady that I know posted in a mom forum and she said I'm so upset my husband, he went to a strip club, he lied to me about it, and, uh, you know, and she also, of course, discussed her reasons for not liking strip clubs, like they were, that was a negative way to exploit women, but none of her other points were addressed. And see, the reason was, because she also said in the post, I'm very pretty, and I think that he should be happy with me, or something like that. And guess what these women did? They immediately attacked her and told her she was full of herself because she said she was pretty. Now look, as a woman I get it. Society wants us to be humble good girls and if we have the nerve to express our confidence in certain ways, people call us bitches. And if we're being, oh, but if they're being nice they might just say we're, then we're full of ourselves, right? That doesn't make us a narcissist if we care about how we look and it doesn't make us a narcissist if we say we're pretty. It just makes us someone who's owning their confidence. What's so bad about that? But, you know, while I get society's point, I still think society's full of shit. So, <laughs> let me just point out something else really quick here. I want you to join me in expressing your self-confidence to the world, okay? Don't be embarrassed or ashamed. Tell the world that you're freaking fabulous and be proud of your amazing self, please. <laughs> Wait, what? You're not sure how to do that? Well, don't worry, I've got your back. You know how I roll. I want to give you a challenge today and we'll be I'll be back every day this week with... Um, another challenge and video to help you become the sexiest self that you can okay so my challenge to you today is to start by thinking of five amazing things that you love about yourself do you have great lips great eyes great hair are you a great friend listener or knitter can you cook like no one's business you know who you are what's amazing about you I want you to tell me in the comments below okay and before you leave me today here's the hard part 
I want you to brag a little bit about it, okay? I want you to change your face, the Facebook status to say something wonderful about yourself or tweet it or pin it or Snapchat it, I don't care. Say something good about yourself in public today. Tell, tell someone what you accomplished that rocked today. Wear your confidence proudly. Own your amazing self and let the world know that you're the bomb diggity girl. You hear me? One more thing. Today, instead of feeling angry or upset when you hear or see someone else feeling good about themselves, I want you to take a minute to compliment that person or compliment someone in your life, whether it's in social media or it's in real life. You might be surprised to find that you feel fabulous afterward um, because it really feels good when you see that you can make someone's heart feel good. And, and if you say, oh, I love your hair or I love your smile or that's such a beautiful dress, gosh, it can really make somebody's day and that's just great energy for you, okay? So that's the whole law of attraction obviously working for you. So you know, remember that you get back what you put out there. We all do. So you know, what do you think? Tell me how you do sexy. Tell me what's sexy about you. Tell me what's amazing about you. I just want to hear your thoughts on all of this stuff. Please share your thoughts below. I'd love to have a discussion on this one, okay? In the meantime, if you have questions, comments, concerns, things you want to talk about, you can visit queenbeing.com for more information on narcissism, narcissism uh, abuse recovery, and, and narcissistic personality disorder, among other things. Um, and also narcissismsupportcoach.com. There's a free five-day email course on the front page, and you can also check into uh, private coaching if you want. You can also get private coaching by emailing me at angyatkinson at gmail.com or you can email my assistant Haley, Haley Help for You, that's H-A-L-E-Y H-E-L-P, the number four, the letter U, gmail, at gmail.com Alright, or booksangiewrote.com for my books. And In fact, I have one, I think it's still on um, free today until the end of the day um, and that one's called Alive Inside and it is specifically about narcissistic abuse recovery so if you haven't picked that up yet go get it now. Alright, I'll see you next time. Have a great night.